talk on some really exciting news that's going on right now. And this is this um, entrepreneur bill that's just passed the house on the 3rd. Um, and if you know a way to track bills or where they're at or who's the deciding or who's the sponsor in the Senate and yada yada yada, um, I need to do some research. But if you can help me with that, send me an email at mike at foundups.org. Mike at foundups, that's a plural, foundups.org. Um, and just a plug, we launch ideas into startups. Okay, that's what we do. We launch ideas. So if you have an idea for a startup and you don't want to incorporate or you don't want to spend a bunch of money, then come to us because we will help you. We won't charge you anything. It's completely free. We uh, have developed the open startup um, and um, we want to help. We want to help the economy. We want to help you with your ideas. So check us out at foundups.org. So, um, this crowdfunding bill is massive. It's going to open up a whole new business. And let me talk about that business because my background as a strategic capital campaign director, and I had my own company called Genesis Productions Worldwide uh, when I left grad, uh, school, and I was uh, hired by a company called National Community Development Services. And this company, one company, okay, one company, National Community Development Services has raised over 1.6 billion dollars. Let me say that, 1.6, not million, billion, okay? Doing strategic initiatives. Now, what is a strategic initiative? Well, a strategic initiative is a startup, okay? It's the, it's the fancy word for a startup in the nonprofit arena, strategic initiative, okay? Startups are all strategic initiatives, people. However, the SEC, because startups fall under the SEC, could not position themselves as nonprofits doing strategic. So a, a nonprofit doing a startup can raise, one company can raise $1.6 billion for them. However, you know, anyone else doing a startup, they've got this big bottleneck, miss this big father, you know, um, saying, no, 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 you can't do it, you can't do it. So, the beautiful thing is, all of a sudden, um, companies like FoundUps, which will do strategic initiatives, a FoundUp is a strategic initiative, right? Um, it's, that's, I use the term strategic initiative for a FoundUp. Using our open startup framework, or I call OIF, the open incubator framework, okay? Open incubator. Um, incubators are places where ideas happen, right? And they're developed in a closed environment. Some of the, f the most famous one, obviously, is Y Combinator. There's Techstars, and there's a host of others that, you know, copycats. There's, there's literally thousands of closed incubators. So we're launching the first open incubator. So by you coming and, you know, being part of FoundUps, again, let me say, we don't take anything. You don't promise any equity. Now, we're not going to give you $12,000, but we're going to teach you how to raise $12,000. You know, there's a famous proverb, right? You can uh, give a man a fish, he eats for a day. You can teach a man to fish, and he'll eat for a lifetime. So we're going to, there's someone shooting at me. Did you hear that? They're uh, shooting for, don't shoot me. <laughs> um, Maybe it's a VC. He's tracked me down. See, I, I'm actually in hiding. Um, I have to live in rural Japan away from uh, the hitmen because the VCs and the venture capitalists and everyone else, you know, they're trying to put an end to these talks. So I'm in incognito. Um, and um, I'm out here, you know, basically having to hide, you know, from Silicon Valley VCs and stuff. You know. uh, Mr. Smith will tell you. I don't know if you've talked to Mr. Smith, but he's a Silicon Valley VC, and he's got my back, let's say. Anyway, so going back to the discussion, this crowdfunding bill is massive. It's massive for the startup. Because let me talk about why, all right? There are three stages to a startup. Now, you won't know this because it doesn't it isn't written about. Startup America doesn't know this because it's obvious on their website. Um, you know, uh, and I've spent a year um, basically having to, number one, define what a startup is. And I, it didn't take me quite a year, but, but um, there are three stages to a startup, and it, and it all deals with money, okay? And it's funny, we, we, you know, to launch a startup, we basically need seed, you know, we'd have what we call our seed round. Well, there's our pre-seed round. 
which traditionally is known as the friends, families, and fools. Now what I've done is I've twisted the pre-seed, the seed, and I've introduced a new term called the seeded, okay, to represent the early stage. Now, this isn't an exact science, okay, because obviously it's just a, it's just a range for, for you as, a, as, a, as, a, as an entrepreneur to understand where you fall, okay. So if you have an idea, okay, and you're like, ah, oh, this is it. This, this idea is going to change the world. This is going to be the next Facebook or the Google or whatever. Guess what? You are a pre-seed startup. Ideas and, and if, you, if you've got the money to incorporate, there's no difference. You're still a pre-seed startup. Okay? Most people, like Startup America, will say idea and then startup. Huh? So they define, see what they're doing is defining a startup as seed. The... Um, ramp up as seed plus or speed up as seed plus and then and then ramp up as seeded okay um the clueless sorry steve but it's true from the chase foundation steve chase um you should hire a ceo of your product that actually understands what a startup is that would be moi and I try to connect with the CEO. Now I'm getting off a tangent here. It just pisses me off where I hate these people who are unaccessible, right? Unaccessible. If I'm ever unaccessible to you, you have my right to kill me. I'm telling you right now. If I'm ever unaccessible, I'm, and I will not, you can come up and beat the crap out of me. Because I believe in being 100% accessible. I believe that you should have the right to email me and I should respond to your emails whether it's on LinkedIn or whatever I will respond if I don't yeah come kill me I deserve to be killed squished murdered for being an elitist fuck like these guys all right so I, Dave McClure slips into me in these talks because he is a mentor of mine and I love the fact that he can get away with all this swearing but the moment I swear I got people like me and um, you know and I'm kind of like uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm an ego, okay, like Steve Jobs. Everyone's like, oh, I love Steve Jobs. The guy was a fucking jerk. No one liked him. No one could work with him, but he was a genius. I'm a genius too. You just haven't given me the opportunity to prove it, right? I didn't grow up in Silicon Valley. I grew up in Spain and in England and rural England, and now I live in rural Japan. So I'm kind of a, sle a Steve Jobs kind of outside in the box, outside the box, right? Um, well, maybe I should say I'm a Steve Jobs. They're all going to get like, oh, you're, you're an egotistical bastard. Well, yeah, maybe I am a little bit. But I'm not, I will respond to your emails if you email me at mike at foundups.com or foundups.org. That will go to our developer. Sorry, Mike, if you get a bunch of emails. It's one of our co-founders. He's got the .com. I have the .org. Um, anyway, so... The crowdfunding bill. I'm excited. Now, my question is this, is that the Wall Street banks ultimately control the IPO. Why, hasn't, how, why haven't we seen that many IPOs in the last five years? Well, it's because of the banks. And if you don't believe me, watch this video, okay? Click right here. You'll see a tag right now, and you'll listen to the CEO of the second market talk about it. Basically, there's a bottleneck, and the Wall Street banks don't want, you know, want to issue IPOs, okay? And not only that, IPO is extremely expensive. They make it expensive. Remember, money is a barrier to entry. So if you make something expensive, you're stopping people from participating. Now, um, you should ask yourself, why hasn't Facebook done an IPO? I mean, LinkedIn did an IPO before Facebook, for Christ's sake. Have you ever, you know, it's, it's, it's insane, and there's a whole bunch of other companies that have done IPOs. Remember, LinkedIn IPO was valued at $15 a share, and it went to $125. It's mad. Well, LinkedIn was pissed off at that. Anyway, so ultimately, you've got to understand this whole bullshit about, oh, the SEC is to protect consumer rights. Stop reading the teleprompter, as I told someone. Because the SEC is basically there to control. And now... Probably there is a concern. I'm not saying it is. It is there kind of to protect. However, it's being used and abused by the, the wealthy, the 1%. The 1% that Occupy is rising up against. And 
I've always been there rising up against the 1%. Um, so this whole new crowdfunding bill basically eliminates, and I talked about the pre-seed, the seed, and something I call the seeded. The pre-seed being under 100,000, whether you're incorporated or not, and um, you don't have any accredited investors. Accredited investors are, the, are the, basically what you call angels, okay? Angels and VCs. I actually call the VC an institutional investor. I call um, an angel an accredited investor. They're both accredited investor, but I put the uh, VC in the institution, which goes into the seeded round, and I put the angel in the seed round, okay? They are a seed investor. The pre-seed means you don't have one of those, and you've raised under 100,000, or you have under 100,000 net profits. Let's watch this uh, tractor before he runs me over. Notice I don't have a license plate on the tractors here. I don't know if you need to have license plate on a tractor in the States. It's out there, they're all plowing the fields now. It's uh, fall, so they're getting it ready. They're putting in the seed for the wheat. So they're gonna plant wheat in here. I don't know if you see the seed in here. Yeah. Uh, I don't see any, yeah, I guess it is in there. I can see the seed. I can see the, the seed in there. The grass seed's already in there. It's all in there. So, um, basically, the crowdfunding bill, I'm already at 11 minutes, sorry if, if you know, my talks are kinda long. Sorry about that. And I'm actually trying a new format, cross, okay? Cross format, we'll see how that goes in YouTube. Um, if you do have, don't do this way, all right, because that way ultimately, um, you know, makes your video really squished on YouTube and you don't have a lot of place to annotate. So I'm trying this new side format as a way to um, see if I can get more annotation. Annotations are really important you know, on YouTube, and no one, I'm probably one of the pioneers behind annotations, um, and we have, actually have a found up called annotate ad, ads.com, annotate ads.com, check it out. Anyway, so um, what the new bill does is it basically removes the pre-seed and the seed as potential barriers from the funding of, of your idea or startup. Um, because the bill allows you to raise up to two million, and I have the seed, the seed seeded level. Some people say five million. I'm putting it down to two million because I think if you've raised or you're netting two million in revenue, you are well on your way, right, as an early stage startup. So I'm saying that's early stage. You've got two million in revenue, or invest or investments. I have net because basically investment is kind of like net revenue. So if someone makes an investment, it's kind of like profit on top of your cost. Make sense? Um, so if, um, and ultimately, um, the, the bill also removes the need to register with the states it, it, or the SEC. It removes the need to, um, um, what's the word? Uh, Oh, there's no longer a 500 investor cap and so on. So it's really important that this bill passes for the American entrepreneur. Um, and it's going to change everything. Mark my word, it's going to change everything. It's going to supercharge the American economy. It's going to allow new companies like mine to come into its own. And um, is going to uh, help bring tens of millions, potentially billions of dollars to launching these ideas. And ultimately, what's most important to me, it's going to flatten the startup, so open startup systems are going to be more favorable. Um, by eliminating what we call these closed incubators um, significantly, they'll still be closed incubators, but they won't be as important anymore. Um, and uh, it's going to be a happier world. My name is Michael Trout. I am this radical upstart. I'm kind of like a, a Dave, uh, 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 I'm kind of like a, uh, what was it, a calm Dave McClure without the goofy hat. Even though I'm going to get kind of a, a beanie if I ever get my $100,000 investment and it's going to have F.U. with the dog on it. 
So when I'm talking to Dave or anyone else, I can just like, or a VC that can like scratch my nose. <laughs> it's gonna say F you and the dog is gonna be right there squatting on my head. I think I'll be funny doing that in a conference. Um, I'm just this radical guy who, who is a very disgruntled entrepreneur who understands the system from an outsider. I am the 99%, one of the 99% who fail to launch their ideas and I've failed repeatedly. I've only had one success and that one success shouldn't have happened, but it did. And the fact that it did happen means that uh, your idea should launch too. And every other significant idea should launch, right? But we lack a framework. We lack a way. So if you watch these videos here, okay, um, you can learn more about, it's the uh, What's a Found Up um, uh, series of talks. There's about 13 of them. About an hour. Well, spend an hour. Learn about what I'm doing. Um, and, um, you know, my sole proprietorship in Japan, the holding company for Found Ups, basically has equity until we raise our first hundred thousand at a penny a share you know if the SEC wants to come and find MJet and Associates and in Japan or come after me MJet and Associates then fine um, so if you want to get a penny a share now understand if you owned Google 10,000 shares of Google or even 2,500 uh, what would be 2,500 shares of Google be worth over a million dollars right now imagine that now I think we can develop an open Google. I think I have just as much smarts as Larry and Eric. I think I have just as a talented team. Um, just don't have the cash flow at this time, but we will. And uh, this law is gonna help us significantly. So shoot me an email so you can kill me if I don't respond at mike at foundups.org. And let's chat, thanks.